Good morning. It is my privilege to introduce our guest in the pulpit this morning. Tom Hubbard is an interdisciplinary artist working on design, fine art, and public art projects. Regardless of medium or project, Hubbard's approach is rooted in his design training and the belief that the solution often comes from the problem. Through a process of inquiry, research and immersion, he explores, interprets, and distills visual opportunities to reach solutions that are at once specific, unique, and meaningful. As a result, Hubbard has produced work ranging from corporate identity systems and packaging to public art installations and exhibitions of photography, mixed media, and ceramics. His work has been exhibited widely in both the US and the Netherlands and is included in several private and corporate collections. Tom Hubbard was born in San Francisco, California, and received a BFA from Indiana University. Hubbard grew up in the Midwest and lived in New England, the Netherlands, and Ohio before moving to Augusta, Georgia in 2016 with his wife and their two children. Good morning. Good morning. I'm an artist, and I make sense of the world through my process of making. And while my process uh, my work is not often political. It does address issues that are difficult, from the loss of my father in the war in Vietnam to uh, feelings of culture shock in immigrating to a foreign country, or, well, the reason I'm here today, guns. My latest work is titled Recoil, and it's, it's an installation of ceramic handguns that are really my response to the epidemic of gun violence that has been sweeping our country for, for some time now. And um, there should be, uh, momentarily, there'll be some uh, work from Recoil being passed around, and, and uh, please have a look. And uh, there'll be more uh, during the reception on view uh, where we can uh, talk a little more uh, in depth, and, and I'll answer any questions that you may have. <coughs> Last fall, as part of the Recoil exhibition at the Indianapolis Museum of Contemporary Art, um, I was able to take part in a, a, a public-based um, project, a community-based project that, that was something completely new to my process. And along with the museum exhibition, I also showed this work at a local gun show. And my goal in doing this was to share this work with a completely different audience than would typically come to the museum or a gallery or even visit me in my, my studio and also to conduct a very unscientific experiment. I wanted to see if these ceramic guns could actually help start a conversation, a, a much needed and long overdue conversation about guns and gun violence. I'm an artist, not an activist, but my aim is true. Now at this point I think it's important to understand that I have some experience with guns, not a great deal, but I grew up around guns and my stepfather taught me how to shoot uh, when I was younger. It was his hobby, and we shot targets and, and clay pigeons and that sort of thing. And he, he taught me uh, how to handle a gun, but most importantly, he taught me to respect a gun. But I'm not a gun guy. I'm an artist. So, you know, how do we get here? A beautiful Sunday morning, I'm talking about art and guns in church um, barely a week after, after another mass shooting. So here's the quick backstory. From 2005 to 2009, my family and I lived in the Netherlands, um, a very open, tolerant, um, and, and liberal country with very little violence and almost no private gun ownership. And what I didn't realize at the time, that we were actually living in a bubble. I mean, we were aware of the big events that were going on uh, back home, but we were very removed and isolated from the day-to-day -day, uh, news reports and the headlines. Um, I remember learning of the shooting in, at Virginia Tech in 2007 um, and, and the, the weight and, and the impact that that event had on the international school that our boys attended and on the expat community that, that we were part of. Um, and, and, and so when, I, when, we, when we finally moved back to the U.S., I was appalled, um, not just at the amount of gun violence, but the fact that nothing seemed to be, uh, was being done about it, um, you know, and, and I, was, I was really struck by the contradictions and the misinformation and the propaganda that seemed to be swirling around this subject. But what I just couldn't get my head around was the fact that it wasn't even being talked about. 
And when it was talked about, um, I, I had trouble with, uh, with the logic or lack thereof that was being applied to this, this subject. Um, common sense and critical thinking, in my opinion, were nowhere to be found. Uh, take this for example. This was a quick study that I did. It's titled Ohio Senate Bill 17. And it's, it's titled after an actual law that was passed in the state of Ohio making it legal to conceal carry a weapon into a bar or a restaurant under one condition, that you didn't drink. I'm still trying to figure that one out. Uh, and so I was disappointed. And, and I thought, surely we could, do, we could do better than this. And so I decided I needed to understand this better. And so I started researching and reading and collecting facts and figures and headlines and, and anything that I could get that was dealing with guns and gun violence and this, this culture around guns. And in the summer of 2013, barely six months before uh, the tragic shooting uh, out at Sandy Hook, uh, I was selected to take part in an open studio residency at the, the um, Haystack uh, Mountain School of Crafts out in Maine. And Haystack is this magical place for artists that just allow you the, the time and the space and the facilities to explore and to develop uh, new work. And so I spent two weeks uh, in the clay studio there making ceramic, hand, ceramic handguns and what would become the, the first studies for the recoil installation. Now I didn't make a lot of friends uh, the first few days at, at Haystack, uh, and I had to eat a few meals alone because nobody was quite sure what the, the long-haired guy with the guns was up to in, in the clay studio. But after a day or two, they, they, they got curious and they stopped by to see what the guns were all about. And I realized the power of these objects and the strength of some of these ideas that were starting to come together the first time I put a gun in someone's hand. For many, it was the first time and the closest that they had come to actually handling a real gun. And they were visibly nervous and uncomfortable and, 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 and some didn't want anything to do with it. While others, well, others were quite comfortable and they commented on, on the gun's weight and its balance, its detail, and they cited it up as if it was the real thing. But they also commented that it made them think a little differently about their feelings about guns. This little clay gun made them question their own position on the subject. And at that point, I knew I was on to something. Now, meanwhile, the carnage from gun violence marched its way through our country in places like Aurora and San Bernardino, Charleston, South Carolina. And now we add Fort Lauderdale uh, to that list. So I realized that this wasn't going away anytime soon. And I continued to research and collect and gather information um, on this subject. And then a little over a year ago, I was uh, commissioned by the museum in Indianapolis to make this work. So recoil is an installation that, that deals with a lot of value or a lot of issues that are, that are uh, tangled up in, in what we call the gun debate. Uh, issues ranging from uh, personal freedom and security to domestic violence and mental illness and issues of race. And it does this by presenting opposing points of view on these issues with contradictory text that's stamped into opposite, uh, opposite sides of the barrel on each gun. And it asks the, the viewer um, to consider an alternative point of view than their own. Um, the guns range in color from white through grays to black because in my mind, this is not a black and white issue. There's no clear right or wrong. There are only shades of gray. Now, as an artist, I, I think when I'm passionate about something, the most natural thing to do is, is to state a position. And I either do that through writing or I do that through, through my work. But to state a position and to say, this is what I think, or this is how I feel. But I decided to do something differently with, with this work. Um, I decided that rather than state a position, to ask a question. And initially, my intent was to be neutral, merely to reflect these contradictions and, and opposing points of view that were out there. But that's not always the best way to start a conversation, especially a difficult one. I also realized that it's almost impossible to be neutral because the simple act of editing begins to point you in one direction or another through what you choose to include or omit. So, I decided the only thing left for me to do was to stir the pot a little bit 
and and so I decided to to start to make more jarring and more aggressive uh, juxtapositions and combinations of the text that I put together. And I decided that if that upset some people, that that was just the cost of getting people to talk about it. Here are a couple of examples. You know, it's, it's not always easy to determine who the bad guys are from the good guys. And there's this one because religion gets tangled up in, in the whole gun debate as well. So I did all of this work and made these guns and put it out there in the world. And still, I'm frequently asked where I stand on this subject. But that's not the point of this work. So last fall, after installing the work at the museum, I went to the gun show. About a week before the election, I rented a table at the Indy 1500 Gun and Knife Show. It's one of the largest gun shows east of the Mississippi, I, I learned. And I set up my ceramic guns as if I was a vendor and tried to start a conversation. And I talked with anyone that would speak to me. Um, here I am, you know, doing my best to look like a gun guy and, 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 and fit in. <laughs> and it may come as a surprise, but I wasn't always well received uh, at, at the gun show. Yeah, I was doing my best, but they weren't having it. Um, you know, many people refused to talk to me or really have anything to do with me. Um, some weren't quite sure what I was doing there or why I was there or what I had displayed uh, on the table, but they knew that they didn't approve. But I'm happy to say that um, these, these guns uh, quite frequently broke the ice and helped to facilitate a conversation, and this experiment was, was pretty successful. Um, and again, it came down to that simple idea of putting a gun in someone's hand, actually handing it, handing it to them that got them to stop and to think and to talk. And I had, I had many conversations and they, they, people were willing to open up to a certain extent, but at a certain point, um, regardless of, of what the subject was, that conversation ground to a halt. Um, and so, and so it became, it became, this, um, it became this, this game for me to try to figure out um, where I could push and how much I could push, to try to find some common ground, to try to find some things that we, that we had in common. And I told them, I said, look, I'm okay with the fact that we may not find much in common. We may not, we might, may not agree on, on very much at all, but it's just not okay uh, it's unacceptable to just put stakes in the ground and say, I'm either for guns or I'm against guns, and, and, not, and not discuss it any further than that. Um, as I said, I, I, I always learn a lot um, through my process of making, and I learn something new when I put the work out in the world. And certainly I learned things through the, my process of, of making this work, but I gained a tremendous insight from this little experiment at the gun show and through trying to engage uh, a completely different uh, audience. So what did I learn? Um, I mean, I knew the, the, the gun debate, as we like to call it, uh, was this mess of, of, of issues uh, that were all tangled up, but there's a lot more to it. Um, I learned there's a lot, of, there's a tremendous amount of fear and distrust out there, and it's aimed in all directions and at, at all groups. Um, many people told me that, that they were there to buy guns while they still could. And they adamantly believed that, depending on the results of the election, that the government was coming for their guns. It's also a semantics game where only the words that, that, that validate um, their position or, or beliefs are considered relevant in, in a conversation in a place where, where well-established facts are easily, are easily dismissed. I was there trying to start a conversation with facts and figures and, and statistics, but many of the people that I spoke to were armed with their own facts and figures and statistics. They were just from different uh, sources than my own. Idolatry is another uh, issue that, that's out there, and I, I knew it was there, but I was completely unprepared and, and very uncomfortable with the fact that people wanted to buy my artwork because it was shaped like a gun. Um, 
regardless of, what, of the text that was stamped into it or the message that it carried, they wanted it because it was a gun, period. I heard uh, my share of conspiracy theories more than I think I could ever recount. And I talked with patriots that told me if my thinking was even slightly to the left, that um, I was un-American. And, and finally, I learned about the, convention, the, the convictions of, of this group. And, and with them, when it comes to issues around uh, gun control or laws or reforms of any sort, they, it, it, there's no gray. Uh, there's no gray area for them. Um, and they feel that, that, that any compromise is too much. I also learned that they're willing to accept the current state of, of things and the headlines that we see every day uh, or nearly every day on the, on the news about shootings and, and gun violence. Uh, they're willing to accept the, the Wild West, as I call it, because they have a gun and they believe that they're prepared. In fact, many suggested that if I didn't already have one that I should get a gun myself, which reminded me of, of the text that's stamped into one of the guns in the show. Question. How many NRA spokesmen does it take to change a light bulb? Answer, more guns. <laughs> now, this, this work didn't, didn't change any minds, um, but it did start a conversation. And I'm okay with that, because I'm an artist, not an activist, but my aim is true. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share this work here today. Um, thank you, Pam, uh, for your interest in this work and for the invitation to come and make this possible. And um, after the service, there'll be more of this work uh, available uh, for closer inspection and to answer questions at that time. Thank you.